Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Sunday morning message of the Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church, uh, located at 7550 Martin Luther King Way South in Seattle, Washington, 98118, uh, where our wonderful pastor is the Reverend Dr. Shelby O. Tate Sr. Our First Lady is Sister Doris Tate. I give thanks to God for giving me the health, strength, and peace of mind to assemble in the house of prayer. Speaking of which, uh, next week, next Sunday, uh, we will be opening the doors for uh, the return to uh, in-church services, which is wonderful. Uh, I know that actually watching a video uh, through our blessed technology uh, is a little convenient for us, maybe a little bit too convenient. Uh, we don't want you to stay home. Uh, we want you to come back to the house of prayer and assemble once again. But next week uh, we will be uh, adhering to Washington State protocols as to wearing masks, uh, social dis distancing, uh, and sanitizer. Uh, as often and washing our hands as often as possible, but we will at, at least be given the opportunity to assemble in the house of prayer once more. Uh, it's nothing like the experience of a Holy Ghost anointed preacher uh, preaching from the pulpit and feeling uh, the fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ anointed in the amazing grace and celebrating the life, death, and res resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we, we are looking forward to next week. I uh, still haven't gotten the okay from the pastor yet to continue to uh, record the services, uh, even while the church is open. But uh, uh, once I get the okay from him, then we can either announce whether or not we're going to continue to do the video services. But uh, let me hurry up and say God is good. And giving honor to the great triune God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give thanks and praise for, to him for his grace and mercy, for allowing us one more day, one more day to get stronger, one more day to get better, one more day to get right with him and his word. I've also uh, already, through protocol, given honor to our pastor and first lady. Also would like to give honor to uh, my late father, the Reverend Dr. Hannibal A. Williams, also giving honor to my brothers and sisters in the ministry here at Rose Hill, uh, Reverend Stephen B. Tate, Reverend Anthony Newell, Reverend Patricia, Patricia Durr, uh, Sister, I'm sorry, Minister Laverne Andrews, and of course our awesome Minister Sherry Tate Stroud, who is also uh, the head of our video uh, and electronics department who's actually bringing you this message today. I uh, also would like to give honor and praise and prayer <clears throat> to all those ministers and reverends and preachers, prophets, all right now standing forth in the pulpits all over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I ask God that please Lord May we all preach with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, preaching with power and conviction. Oh Lord, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ so that some lost soul may come forth and say, what must I do to be saved? The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, it pleases God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who would believe. For God has used his prophets to reveal his word to his people for thousands of years and throughout all the generations of man. Before we get into the message today, I'm going to like to say a short prayer and then we're going to get on into the word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the health, strength, and peace of mind to assemble in the house of prayer one more time. We ask and pray, O Lord, that you continue to be a merciful God. 
Continue to show mercy upon your people. Continue to show mercy upon the bereaved that have, through this pandemic, has lost loved ones and are grieving in hospital rooms all over the world. We ask, O oh Lord, that you come in and touch the hearts of the bereaved. We ask, O oh Lord, that you comfort them, O oh Lord. Send your Holy Spirit down into the hearts and minds of the bereaved and ease their pain and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as to your word and your will. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that you send your anointing down into this house, that you anoint your servant, O oh Lord, that you move me out of the way, Move my personality, my mind, anything that is me. Move me out of the way, O oh Lord, and speak through me. Take complete control. Speak to your people directly through me, O oh Lord. Give your people the mind and understanding of the word that you speak to them without any confusion, O oh Lord. So let it strengthen their lives and apply it to their daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The message today is from the New Testament book of John, the fourth gospel of the disciples. John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 14. For those of you who did not get that, the book of John. Gospel of the Disciples, chapter 1, verses 1 and 14. Let us read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Background scripture today will be John chapter 1, verses 2 through 13. The theme is the word. And our subject is how much word is in you. How much word is in you. The Word of God is the foundation of all creation. If God had not spoken the words, let us create, or let there be, none of us would be here. By his word, he created the heavens and the earth. By his word, he created the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. Our flesh, muscle, Bones, marrow, blood, and of course, our immortal soul was all created by the Word. This is why His Word is the most powerful force in the universe. Once the Word comes from God, either by his thought or him speaking it, the power of his spirit creates it. 
and brings it into matter and reality. Which makes his word the foundation of all creation. How he communicates with us and how we communicate with him is by the word. Because in essence, we are his creation by his word. We are the creation of his word. Even how we communicate with each other is by words and the word. As I am speaking to you right now, and how you can understand me is by words. Through words, I am trying to tell you about the word of God. Writing came forth as a tool to enhance the word and preserve the word for future generations. To give direction and instruction to all mankind for all time. But even if the written word is destroyed, the word of God will always exist. As long as God exists, we exist. Because by his word is why we exist. For the word exists inside of us. Because we are the creation of the word. That's why we all have the ability to hear the word and to speak the word and remember the word and to write the word. The written word enables us to go back thousands of years in human history. And not one house does not have books of some kind. Paperback, hardcover, brochure, or even a modern day computer version. There is even a bestseller list where the most popular books are listed. But it's always wrong. And don't let it fool you. The number one bestseller always has and always will be the Word of God. They just don't list it. And there is a reason why they don't list the Bible number one. It's because they think on a list of bestsellers, it's only interesting if the top spot is up for grabs. The Word of God on average has an annual sales of $425 million every year. 20 million copies are sold in the United States alone. The Guinness Book of World Records reports that from the years 1815 through 1975, 2.5 billion Bibles were printed. And an average of 100 million per year have been printed 
from 1975 to present year 2020. Which makes the total number of Bibles printed at 6 billion with a B. No other piece of literature even comes close to the Bible. But the written word has not always been the only way to pass it down from generation to generation. The spoken word passed it down and has given us our history as well. One of my favorite books of all times is the book Roots by Alex Haley. In his book, he wrote about the generational story of his family and how as a child he listened to his elders as they told the story of their ancestor, a man named Kunta Kente, who was captured in Africa while out looking for some wood to build a drum. He was then sold into slavery and brought to America never to see his home again. And through the spoken word, they passed down his story through all the generations of the Haley family. And when it was told to Alex Haley as a child, he searched back through the history of his family, all the way back to Africa, where he found an elder of the tribe of Kunta Kente. And these elders were the library and the history of his people. And as the elder began to tell him the complete story of his tribe, the elder came to the story of a young warrior who disappeared one day while he was out looking for some wood to make a drum, never to be seen again. This elder made the connection from Africa to Alex Haley's family. These elders should make us realize the true power of the word. And why we should tell our children about history and the word of God. Listening, remembering, believing the word of God is the foundation of a blessed life. I'm going to say that again. Listening, remembering, and believing the word of God is the foundation of a blessed life. Both here on earth and the key to the gates of heaven. An everlasting life for our souls and the souls of our family and loved ones depends on the amount of the word of God you know, study, remember, and obey. The answer to the questions is, is there a God? And to, what must I do to be saved? Is in the word of God. The word tells you to answer to what must I do to be saved? You must hear the word of God, believe the word of God, confess with your mouth the word of God, and repent to the word of God, and be baptized. According to the word of God, we must accept Christ Jesus as our personal savior, and claim the sacrifice of his life on your or our behalf for your or our sin so the word of God and the Holy Spirit can take hold in your soul. The word of God should
should be sought after by you more than silver and gold. For the word of God will give you wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding to endure this world of sin. The word of God is everywhere around you. On your phone, on the radio, in every church, in every Sunday school, in every city, in every country of the world, the world. The word of God will defeat your enemies. The word of God will overcome any obstacles in your path. The word of God will change the issues in your life. I came here today to tell you God wants you, God wants you to seek the word. The mighty word of God. Seek the word. Read the word. Remember the word. Study the word. Till you become the word. The amount of word you have will start to change you. The more you search, the more you seek the word of God, the closer you will get to God. For he is the living word. If you don't seek his word, you become your own word. And your word is who you are. Would you think about that for a second? Just like his word is who he is. Whatever words you say, whatever words you think, whatever words you tell others, you have to realize that what your words and what your actions or deeds say about you will tell you how far away you are from God. The amount of word someone has always shines through them. They shine with the power of the Holy Ghost. They walk with confidence, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. They have love, joy, peace, no fear, for they constantly reflect and reminisce about his word and stir up the Holy Spirit within their souls. They become a walking, talking version of the Word of God. By knowing the Word of God, you can speak it and praise and worship God more effectively. By reflecting on the great scriptures of the Bible and seeing the promises of God and be comforted to know if you keep your word to God, God will keep his word to you. Here's some of the words God has promised you. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son to condemn the world, but through him it might be saved. For he will be bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace will be upon him. And by his stripes we will be healed. 
For he is the way, the truth, and the life. For no one comes to the Father except through him. For all things were created by him that are in heaven and in the earth, visible and invisible. And as people who is called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. For we should know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. For you should trust in me with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. For in all ways acknowledge me, and I shall direct your path. For my grace is sufficient for thee. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. For you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of me who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. For they that wait upon me shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run but not be weary and walk but not be faint. Oh, Lord, as I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again, and I shall receive you unto myself, so that where I am, you shall be also. For I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, which is, which was, which will come to pass. Amen. 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 Oh, that was a powerful word. Uh, finally, I'd like to say, uh, in the sayings of my generation, after we've spoken a word of truth, we used to say something like, word. All righty.